Hi, I'm Lisa Metropolis with Innovative Health Magazine, and I have the distinct pleasure, uh, and I'm honored to be in the company today, of Ms. Cecilia Garcia Akers. Thank you so much for taking this time uh, to be with us. Cecilia, your father was Dr. Hector P. Garcia, the founder of the American GI Forum. Uh, he founded that in 1948. And you are here uh, in the mid-Michigan area today, uh, this whole week actually, and tonight at the awards gala and ceremony to promote your book, The Inspiring Life of Texan, Hector P. Garcia. Uh, there's so much history, uh, so much that people don't know. And right now there's, there's so much uh, correlation between what's going on yes. uh, in the country today with DACA and the phase out uh, of, of uh, the, the, the dream. And uh, your father was a, was a social activist uh, and he started this program. It really got going in 1948 yes. with the Longoria Affair. Yes. Tell us about the book, your passion, and what you've been doing uh, for the last several decades. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, being his daughter ha was uh, very challenging in a way, and uh, one of the challenges was that he was so busy, he was not at home very much, and so my mother really raised the, the four children because he was always gone and uh, but the book was just a godsend because I didn't ask to write a book and to be approached by a publisher to write a book about your father was something I never even planned or imagined and so they did not want a historical accounting of his life they wanted a personal daughter's perspective of his life and they just let me write whatever I, I wanted mm -hmm. and and so it turned out to be very good it's in its second printing and one of the greatest honors I've ever had in my whole life was presenting a book talk at the Library of Congress uh, a year ago in May so they invited me to come up there and do a book talk at the Library of Congress on my book that is wonderful it is that it is, is wonderful uh, your book uh, it, it, as an introspective of what it was like growing up uh, with uh, such a such a pioneer of Hispanic civil rights in America. What was that like? Um, and what did what did lessons did did your father teach you? Uh, some of the most important ones that you take with. I, you? I think probably the most important thing he taught me growing up was never to judge anyone, never to judge people. And I had the opportunity to work with him ten years in his office as, as his medical assistant. So he trained me a lot in, in health care and how to take care of patients. And then I went on to be a physical therapist. So I think we are there to serve others and we are there to help people through their, their hard times and their illnesses and their surgeries and not to judge how they got there but are, uh, an opportunity to make their lives better and I think that was the most important thing he taught me and also kindness to everyone and patience, tremendous patience which sometimes I lose it, but <laughs> but I'm, but you we know all we, we we all do. But you know, just be patient with others because they 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 need us. And I think this country right now needs someone like Dr. Hector P. Garcia to stand up for people, to stand up for the immigrants, to stand up for health care, to stand up for veterans. And I I think really, too bad his time is not here. But I think we we can take. The things that he taught us and his advocacy and apply to our own lives today. Now uh, you have continued his mission, you have continued uh, to make sure that the next generation knows of your father's legacy, uh, not just for Hispanic, uh, the young people, mm -hmm. uh, in the Hispanic young people, but for all people in, in the country. Um, this isn't something that we, uh, that was shared with with us uh, in our textbooks growing mm -hmm. up. Right. Um, and as, it, as far as education and what's happening, uh, the social unrest right now, what's happening in the country, um, do you think uh, this, your father's message right now, what would you think would be uh, the most important thing that he would say right now? Well, I think his message resonates, uh, first of all, you know, serving others and understanding that this country is made of immigrants and this country is made of different types of people and different races and ethnic groups and we need to try to get along with everyone and 
and I think that's that he got along with everyone he got he you know he was just a role model for anyone that would listen to him or he interacted with and everyone had the greatest respect for him because they knew that he was here to help others and I, and I think that this is what we need to do we have to try to be patient not judge people and to try to integrate different types of people in our in our own lives and this is what he would do and I think that's what we need right now I uh, just lastly your father was such obviously an incredible champion for for veterans yes I uh, that was that was his 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 onus his pride uh, what do you think could be done right now for our veterans in the state that we're in? Uh, what do you think he would be championing, championing right now for our veterans? What do you want to see happen? I, I would think, first of all, uh, deportation of veterans that have served this country uh, back to Mexico or wherever is, is just totally wrong. I think that there needs to be some a congressional movement to to stop that and to protect them because they did serve this country. I think that's the first thing he would do. The other thing he would do is guarantee the right, which I said a right, to appropriate adequate health care for everyone. And I think that is so important uh, and that, because that's what he did. He treated people even though they couldn't pay him anything. And he took them to the, he sent them to the hospital. He paid their way. And because he, that is so important that we as a country provide adequate health care for people and not try to uninsure millions of people because this was a campaign promise. That is so wrong. And I think those are the two things, taking care of the veterans that have served in the military and not deporting them, and then also health care for everyone. Cecilia Garcia Akers, it has been an, an honor to be in your company. Oh, thank uh, thank you. you so much for talking to, to our audience today. Uh, and I look forward to uh, sharing this and speaking with you uh, going forward. Thank, thank you, you so much. But thank you. Thank you for your time. I'm Lisa Metropolis with Innovative Health Magazine, and we'll be back next time. Thank you. Thank you.